Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is Earth. You probably knew that, right? So today we're going to be talking about habitable planets, but specifically we're actually talking about this research that is not really good news. The research suggests that the habitable planets like Earth might be super super rare in our galaxy. In other words, we might have trouble finding Earth 2.0. Welcome to What The Math. Now, this particular research that you can find in the description below doesn't really talk about habitable planets in general. It only talks about the atmosphere of those planets. Specifically, it talks about atmosphere that's very similar to planet Earth. And what the researchers behind this paper did was simulate Earth around other stars. They literally took planet Earth with its atmosphere and with its conditions that we currently have, including, of course, the magnetosphere, and then picked a bunch of random stars out there in the galaxy. Most of them were quite active, actually. A lot of them were either red dwarfs or stars that are just generally more active than our own sun. Placed the Earth in the habitable zone where it would potentially have water. And finally calculated what happened to the atmosphere. And as you can probably tell from the title, the results were not very positive. So let's discuss them in a little bit more detail. For this study, they actually used a model known as the COMPOT code, which is an extremely accurate predictor of the evolution of atmosphere, and it uses um, really, really complex math to identify what happens to the atmosphere in certain conditions. We're not going to really go into detail about this just yet, but um, in essence, it's a simulation based on mathematical principles of how atmosphere is being lost by various types of interactions with solar radiation or um, other types of atmospheric um, interactions. And the idea here is that we're just trying to find out how much atmosphere is lost in a certain situation. So for example, let's just take TRAPPIST-1 system that's probably the most famous um, exoplanetary system right now that has seven different terrestrial planets. Here, the habitable zone is in green, and let's just say we were to place planet Earth here, just somewhere right there. Now, according to this study, the result would be quite dramatic for the atmosphere of our planet. Even though it's not really visible here, it would actually kind of look like this. The entire planet would start losing a lot of nitrogen and a lot of oxygen pretty much every single second. And the escape mechanism here would be so dramatic that within about 100,000 years, there would be practically nothing left of the previous atmosphere. But interestingly, it would not really affect molecules like carbon dioxide. So CO2 would most likely remain here. And there is a very similar parallel to this in our own solar system. We know that our beautiful neighbor Mars one day had a very thick atmosphere, but because the magnetosphere of Mars somehow disappeared or maybe never even existed, it eventually lost all of the atmosphere and only CO2 remained. We know that it did have oxygen and it most likely also had nitrogen, but all of this is gone now. Another similar but more extreme case in our solar system is Venus. Venus is essentially all CO2, there's nothing but carbon dioxide here, and pretty much most of the oxygen and nitrogen has long been gone. We don't really know where it went, it could have landed on Earth, but it's not there anymore. And neither one of these planets has any protection from the solar radiation, although Venus does have a very unusual induced magnetic field that is created by the interaction of solar radiation with the ionosphere of Venus that then creates very cool and very unusual magnetosphere that seems to interact with the planet and also protect it from further degradation. But despite the CO2 that will remain here, all of the other stuff, specifically oxygen and nitrogen, will definitely be gone. Within about 100,000 years, the entire planet would lose pretty much most of the atmosphere, leaving nothing but CO2 behind. Now, the calculations here were very, very precise, and this applies to pretty much most of the stars out there in the galaxy. 
In this case, we took a look at this red dwarf. This is a very, very active star known as Trappist-1, but pretty much most modern uh, red dwarfs are very active. It will take several billion years for most of these stars to not be as active as they are right now. Here, if I wait just a little bit, just a few days actually, there will be at least one major eruption which would cause dramatic effects on the atmosphere. Now, this also applies to other active stars. As a matter of fact, it may apply to most of these stars in the galaxy. Our star, the Sun, is one of the weirder ones. It's one of the quietest stars out there. There are obviously other stars that are much more massive and more quiet than the Sun. Like, for example, I've talked about A-type stars recently. But those stars are rare, just like, in some sense, our Sun. Most stars are quite active, like you see. Most stars will produce a lot of flares and a lot of coronal mass ejections, which normally strip atmosphere of everything. So this is where it gets a little bit sad, I guess. This particular study suggests that if you were to have an Earth-like planet, it would most likely just have a lot of this at first, and then would have very little left behind. At least for now. Here's the thing about red dwarfs, though. They actually do come down with time. And a lot of red dwarfs in the next few hundreds of billions of years will become very, very quiet, very, very calm. And this will give other planets, like this one right here, a chance to eventually develop oxygen and nitrogen atmosphere. And we believe this is probably what happened on our planet Earth as well, because back in the days it only had CO2 and the sun was very active when it was young. But today we know that we have a lot of oxygen and a lot of nitrogen that was either delivered from the um, other parts of the solar system or may have also been produced by life as well. And so a lot of this stuff will change over time as soon as the parent star, in this case Trappist-1, calms down a little bit and stops throwing off so many coronal mass ejections. In other words, with time, most of these stars out there in our galaxy will become quite friendly to habitable planets and to life. But as of today, as of right now, and as of basically the next few million years, um, not so much. This study suggests that we're not going to find any habitable planets with good enough atmosphere. CO2 atmosphere, maybe. Some other gases, maybe. But probably not something with oxygen and nitrogen that can stay there for long periods of time without some really powerful magnetic field that would be needed to protect them. So on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video, and if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Do check out the paper I mentioned in the description below, and see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.